Hello, Shalom, Arastafari. We want to discuss this issue of um, masonry and Freemasonry. There's a lot of confusion around this particular subject matter, and part of it is part of it is is, is programming. One is programmed to think of when they hear Mason, they think of Freemasons. But there's a difference between the craft of masonry <coughs> and Freemasonry, and it's very clear when you even uh, watch many of these and study, Google it, and do your own research, and just be diligent. First of all, you have to get over the fear and the phobia. There's a lot of fear and phobia and hype and confusion around this particular issue. Now, we're in our Torah portion, um, reading and feeding Ki Tissa, Ki Tissa, this week's Torah portions known as Ki Tissa. Now, um, uh, Tekebele, which would be more correct, I think we have in our um, chart, uh, let's go to the key verse from the scripture. Let's bring this up right here. Um, the portion, this Torah portion is the 21st weekly Torah portion. It's known as Ki Tissa, based on the words in Exodus chapter 30, verse 11, when you take, when you take. So let's go to chapter 30. Let's go to chapter 30, verse 11 of the book of Exodus, or Orit Ze Se'at, Orit Ze Se'at. So here we have the royal and Hark of Adamawi Haile Selassie's uh, Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals. Um, let's bring this into into a little better focus right here. And this is chapter thirty, which is known in um, the Hebrew as uh, Shemot, as Shemot, which refers to the the names. So the Book of Exodus that you know as the Book of Exodus is also called in the Hebrew Shemot. Now, in this particular study right here, let's, uh, we've got a couple of programs running simultaneously. Let's see if we can um, try to navigate through this. And we're going to touch on, this is a, a picture from um, Tissalot, James Tissalot, an artist named James Tissalot, a Eurocentric artist, but we like his watercolors a lot. And... Um, very, very accurate, even though some of the images are whitewashed. This one is interesting on um, uh, Bezalel, or Bezalel, Bezalel. And this is from 1896, the picture on the left, to 1902 by James uh, Tisselot. So let's go to the scripture portion so we can get into this particular reading and feeding right here. Um, Let's bring this into frame right here a little bit better. Okay, here we have this particular portion um, from the book of... All right, here we go right here. So when we bring this down to verse 11, the key word right here, verse 11, um Hussein and D below Tanagaro. And the Lord and Yahweh spake to Moses, saying, Now we've touched on this. This is the atonement money right here. And then we're going to go to the next chapter. Go to the next chapter and bring up uh, Bezalel or Bezalel, right? Bezalel. To get into this portion right here in chapter 31st. The 31st chapter. And here we go right here. Here we go right here. So we have Orit Zesa'at Salasa'an and the Lord Yahweh spake to Moses saying, Egziyav Harim Musain and Di below Tanagaro E Ka Yehuda Neged Yemihon Yehor Ye Lijlij Ye Uri Lij Basil Elin Besumu Archewalo, C. A Targum here, translation King James. C. I have called by name 
Bezalel, or Basilel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehuda, of the tribe of Yehuda. Verse uh, 3, Besarahulu, Bilhat, Bebim, Bemastawalim, Beuketim, Ye Egiziav Harin, Menfes, Molahubet, Molahubet, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Now, here's the, here's, here's the key part right here, because here we're learning of the, the, he, the, the root of the Hebraic order of the craft, the Hebraic order of the craft. Now, what we're going to learn is that this actually has come out of Egypt. This is part of the craft that has come out of ancient Egypt. So when we touch on um, Bezaliel, and we're going to use this particular uh, James Tisselot image. It's, it's very interesting, this this figure here, because it's obvious that this person, this drawing here, is a black man. It's very interesting, this Tisselot picture. It's kind of dark. You understand? That perhaps this is part of the whole Masonic and the, the law of the craft. But in the Bible, in the scriptures, in the book of Exodus, this is the first direct mention of the craft that we know as so-called masonry from a Hebraic. This is this is before the so-called Hiram, Hiram Abyss. This is before the 1700s and speculative so-called Freemasonry. Now, let's first of all touch on the difference between masonry and Freemasonry. The difference between masonry and Freemasonry is the difference between being a craftsman and being into witchcraft. In other words, the mason is those who are of the craft. And we're speaking about the real craft of building. And what we did is um, did a brief um, uh, collection of words and uh, references right here in a rough script. We can't go through all of this right now, but touching on a particular couple of, a few particular verses, key verses. And let's bring this up right here. So we said Mason versus so-called Freemason. Now, the, the idea of free is, is the key thing. You understand? Even the Bible speaks about how ones would use freedom. You understand? Freedom, the, 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 the tricky use of, of freedom. What, does, what are they free of? Since the original order was based on building... You understand masonry? What's the difference between free masonry? See, those who are into free masonry, and the modern Eurocentric form of free masonry, the key is that word free. So when you look up freedom in the Bible, freedom occurs actually twice in the Bible. And here's, here's one verse in Acts uh, 22 and uh, 28. 22 and 28. So we're going to bring up. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22 and 28, to kind of hone in on this word freedom, right? Now, freedom, like as we said, is, is here in the Bible two times. Here it says, and the chief captain answered, with a great sum I obtained this freedom, this freedom. Now, freedom in this use is citizenship. When we go to Leviticus 19.20, Remember, freedom is, is twice. It says, and whoever lieth carnally with a woman that is a bond may be throth to an husband and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, nor freedom given her. So we just see the, the sense of freedom within the scripture. Now, let's look at this Freemasonic word known as liberty, biblically speaking. So let's go to liberty. Now, liberty and the word freedom, we can't get into the details of this, but make a note of it often confounded one with the other. But the scriptures makes a mention of a curious use of um, liberty, how, um, how they promise one's uh, liberty, they promise one's freedom, but it's through that false promise that they actually enslave ones. Now, this is uh, 
very interesting in the scriptures to spy out our liberty, stand fast in the liberty while they while they promise uh, let's see if we can bring this up. While they promise set at liberty, while they promise, um, let's see if we bring this up. Now, the purpose of this particular um, reasoning, the purpose of this particular teaching is to show that there is a positive aspect Um There's a pro there's, there's a positive aspect um, to this that needs to be that needs to be understood and um, while well, they I think it's Romans right here Romans let's see Romans. Okay, yes, yeah, actually it's Peter, Peter, Peter 2 and, and, and 19, Peter 2 and 19. It says, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. Now, uh, another translation says, although these false teachers promise such people freedom, that, see, that's the, the, the translations in King James uses liberty, but if you study the word, a more correct would be the word freedom, but freedom only appears twice in the Bible. And it's very interesting to study the word freedom and liberty and to get to the roots of the matter. But concerning this right here in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 19, it says, While they promise them liberty, although these false teachers promise such people freedom, they themselves are enslaved to immorality. So this is separating the so-called order of the true Mason. See, Bezaliel gives us an example of the true Mason. And this is an image right here from um, Tisselot, from Tisselot of uh, uh, Bezalel or Bezalel. Bezalel right here. And, and we notice this is very interesting when you look at this image. If this brother right here, or this man is not a black man in some sense of it. Now, he's the one, according to the scriptures, if we bring up the scripture right here, he is the one, according to the scripture, that it says that he is the one who, it says, God, Jah, Yahweh, says, I have filled him with the spirit of wisdom. The, the spirit of God, that spirit of Elohim, in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, in all manner of workmanship. Now, why is this? Why is this? Why is this important? You understand? Why is this important? This is very important because, first of all, the three basic the three basic degrees are touched on. Wisdom, first of all, he's filled with the Spirit of God. He's in the Spirit of the true God. In wisdom, he has wisdom, right? And wisdom is a key word for initiation into what ones will say were the ancient mysteries or the higher schools or in modern way of referencing this one has like degrees, has gone to college, have gone to, has advanced and special training, special skills, right? Wisdom. But wisdom usually is concerning the so-called mysteries or concerning the craft, the higher level of skills, you know, the higher sciences. Most folks didn't go to any special schools. They picked up trades or inherited trades from their, you know, from their particular um, manner of life, village, town, so forth and so on. But some, and remember these ones had come out of ancient Egypt, were initiated, like Moses was, into the wisdom of the Egypts. You understand what ones were called were the mystery schools, so forth and so on. But taking away a lot of the hype from it, many of these mystery schools were some of the basic crafts, such as the, the builder's crafts, this carpentry, such as um, 
hew as of wood, cut as of stone, so forth and so on. The ones who are able to build society, the artisans, you understand? Know now we can see in this modern world the craft of the artisan because of the free Masonic conspiracy, because they're free from these are the very same false teachers. You understand the so-called speculative. You see, you have the speculative Masons. You understand who use the title of Masons, call themselves Freemason. What are they free of? They are free of the Spirit of God. They're free of God's wisdom, of His understanding, of His knowledge, and they are not working His will. This is what is very, very clear. So there's a difference between Mason and Freemason. This is a key point that hopefully we'll go into some more studies and details to elaborate and to highlight on. But here it says, "Besarahulu bilhat." And I have filled him, this is Jah, Yahweh, the God of Israel, Moses' God, you understand, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, choosing now, out of the Beit Israel, a particular man, you understand, um, Bezaliel, or Bezalel, Bezalel, who is of the tribe of Judah, to be his appointed craftsman for the building and the working of the tabernacle, of the clothing, of the jewelry, of all these sort of crafts. So it's very important to understand the, the importance of these particular crafts. Now over here you see some of the early the early tools coming out of ancient Egypt. You have the the square level with the plumb bob and the plumb the plumb line is also mentioned in the scripture. Even the Lord God Jah holds the plumb line. So these are so called Masonic um emblems, Masonic tools of the craft because do not forget that the Almighty built heaven and the earth and the seas is the creator, is the grand, the true grand architect. It's the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have to distinguish between the true masons, the true craftsmen, such as Bezaliel, and those whom Hawariya uh, Petros, Peter, here in Peter chapter uh, 2, verse 19 says, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. A clarification of this liberty is in, the, is in the next translation of this very same verse, which says, Although these false teachers promise such people freedom, you understand, to be a free mason, freedom, they themselves are enslaved to what? Immorality. They are, see, see, the true Mason, you know what I'm saying, is not free of the wisdom of God. And this is what we find in Bezaliel's example here in Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 11. Because that gives the key that for whatever a person succumbs to, or for of whom a man is overcome, because the Bible teaches us that we are to be the overcomers, as Burhana Selassie Bob Marley said, the black survivors, the overcomers. I, we shall overcome, I and I have overcome, in the Spirit of God, being guided, as it says right here, by being filled with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. So that key word right here, this is the key word right here. All manner of workmanship. Now, we're going to study this as we go a little bit deeper into the Hebrew and look at what the Hebrew actually actually points to when it's referring to all manner of workmanship. But let's go through some of the, the job descriptions of this one whom Tisselot has given us this very interesting um, picture of here of Bezaliel, who was the master, the master craftsman, who was appointed to build the tabernacle, you understand, as well as the furniture, all of the furniture, and to oversee all of the building of the furniture, and all the instruments, 
including the clothing, including the, the so-called jewelry. You know what I'm So we're going to see um, what a master so-called craftsman or the skills that a master so-called mason really has as we go forward right here. So verse 4 says, Yet to devise cunning, it says cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass. Kuter Amis, verse 5, in and in cutting of stone. So these are the stone cutters. Like we said, there's a lot of confusion about what's a mason, who's a mason, so forth and so on. But we want to go to the, the origination. Now, of course, the origination comes out of ancient, ancient gubbets from ancient Egypt. And the real root is in the Tobia or Ethiopia, the first place mentioned in the Bible. So it says, and in cutting of stones to set them. So the cutting of stones and in the setting of these stones and in carving of timber. So in the carving of wood, the carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. So here we have workmanship once again. Now, along with Bezalia, Bezalia, who is truly the master, the master mason chosen by the Almighty God to follow the commands given by Musa for the building of the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the garments, all of the furniture, so forth and so on. And we we'll go through an itemization of each of these that uh, Bezalia, and even the name Bezalia, which means in the shadow or the image of God. The very same word in the Hebrew is that which is found in Genesis in Genesis 1, chapter 1, where it speaks about, and man was created, let us make, create man, let us make man, create man in our image, after our likeness. That word image and likeness is in um, the word Bezaliel, according to the Hebraic. But here, accompanying Bezaliel, is a holy act, as it says, Enem Eneho, Ka'ar Sugar, Kadana Neged, Yemihon, Ye Ahi Samikin Lich, El Yabin Setahu, Yazezo Hu Hino Hu Lua Yadargu Zen, Belabacho at Ibebeno Chai Behonut Hulu, Tibebin Anorhu. And I, this is Yahweh now speaking. This is Jah speaking. So Jah is choosing his own master craftsman for the tabernacle. And I, behold, look, see, I have given with him a holy ab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Don. So we have Bezaliel. We have Bezaliel here of the tribe of uh, Judah, and along with him, as the master craftsman of the tabernacle and the furniture and the ark and the lid of the ark, it's interesting how even the incense, even the making of the incense, you understand, is also specified. The garments also are specified. Given along with him is uh, a holy act. So here it goes on to say that, and now we're going to find out the key. The key is coming up right here. And in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, wise-hearted, I have put wisdom. This is the key. Not those who are foolish-hearted, not like the false teachers that, that Petros warns us of in Second Peter 2.19, while they promised them liberty, although these false teachers promise such people freedom to be a Freemason, you know, and while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. So we can judge a tree according to the teaching of Yeshua by the fruit. So if we look at the fruit of so-called modern-day Freemasonry, 
right? What are they free of? It seems like they're free of obedience to the law and the will of God. And that this verse is apropos. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Although these false teachers promise such people freedom, they themselves are enslaved to immorality. You understand? Immorality, immoral actions. And, you know, we don't need to regurgitate, you know, all that has been attributed rightly, correctly, with evidence to so-called modern Eurocentric free masonry. For whatever a person succumbs to, to that he is enslaved. You understand? Or of the same is he brought in bondage, of he's brought in bondage. So what we're touching on here is the original and we're contrasting it to what most people know nowadays, which is the which is the counterfeit. Which is the counterfeit. So Bezalia Bezalia is chosen to be the master craftsman of the tabernacle, the furniture, the clothing, even even um the apothecary. Of 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 the the itan or the aishans the ketrot the incense the working out of the incense as well is attributed to Bezaliel and his and his um, assistant um, Aholiab or El Eliab Eliab in the Ethiopic is Eliab and here in the King James a holy app, but the key right here is this, and in all the hearts and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted, that wisdom that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom, so those who are wise hearted, those who are hakim, was put hokma or wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. So they're not free to make whatever they want to make, any kind of idol or, you know, anybody's, like, corporate logo or something like that. No. They are under a specific, they're, they're under specific orders. So they're not, they're, they're agents, yes, but they're not free agents. I want you to understand the difference between Mason, true Mason, and as well as the importance of Mason, we're going to find out a little bit, a little bit um, forward in this study, how when the Israelites were taken into um, captivity, that first they removed all the craftsmen, they moved everybody who had some skills, trades or skills. Look at black folks today. How many of them have real trades or skill? Look at black folks before uh, uh, integration. Black men and women had trades and skills. You understand? Now nobody has any trades and skills and are enslaved because the same thing that happened to the Beit Israel in spirit and in truth is what has happened to the lost sheep in the wilderness of the Americas, especially over the past 40 years. Al Qutr Sabat, verse 7, it says, Yeah, Megananya win, Din Kwan, Yeah, Mr. Karunim. Tabot be arsum lai yallowin ye sir yet mekadenyawin ye dinquanim ikahulu the tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is there upon and all the furniture of the tabernacle or all the furniture of the tent kuter cement gabatawnim ikawnim ka ikaw ka ikaw hulugar yenes awena mekres ye itana mashawiya mashawiyawin and the table and his furniture and the pure candlestick this is an error errata we touched on that before it shouldn't be candlestick it should be menorah or lamp stand so just make a note of that not candlestick that's that is um that is uh errata that's that's an error it's out of time later on they have candlesticks 
you understand later on there were candlesticks um, and we're speaking really after the time of the Beit Israel. This is after the time of 70 AD. The candlestick business, you understand, came in at this time it was oil lamps. So this should be the pure um, lamp stand with all his furniture and the altar of incense or ancients lips and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture and the laver and his foot, speaking of the stand, and the cloths of service. So the cloths of service, so the garments of the priests. It's not like nowadays you have like a, a whole bunch of different people. No, it, all this was under Bezaliel because Yahweh chose him as one who was filled with the spirit of Elohim. He's, he's filled with the spirit of God, or one can say the gods, but more correctly of Elohim, the gods in the sense of the Trinity, God, the Trinity. But he's filled with the spirit of God, and he's wise-hearted, too. He's wise-hearted. This is the key. Remember, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, and he was mighty in word and deed. So this one, too, must have also been learned in these, these mysteries as well, the, the skills of the craft. Be'kuhinet inen yemiya galeg galubetin ye'kahinuna yarunina lipsa tekuhinona ye'lijochuna lips, lips, lips. And the cloths of service and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest office so one cannot minister in the priest office without the proper garments that's also a note a word that needs to be understood now we get to verse 11 right get to verse 11 and verse 11 now completes this particular part. Then we catch up on it a couple of chapters later on when actually these things now are being built and completed, so forth and so on. Here's where the command, the, cho the choice is made of the master craftsman of uh, Bezaliel, the Hebrew master craftsman, is, is, is chosen to um, do this work along with a holy ab. And we see some of the tools of the crafts right here, as well as some of the tools that Yahweh himself uses, and uses symbolically and even in principle, actually. Now, let's get to verse Kuta Asra and it says, Ye kibatu nema zayit le mekdesua ye mihona tafacha shituunim it an. In the Zezahu Hulu Yadurgu, and the anointing oil and the sweet incense, the sweet ancients for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded thee, shall they do. Shall they do. So they are under specific command. So here we're learning of the Hebraic or the Hebrew, the true Masons. So we can say the black Masons out of Egypt, the Hebrew Masons out of Egypt. So truly the, the order of the craft, and the craft comes out, the true craft comes out of Egypt. But there's a caveat. In other words, there's a condition. You see, and Yahweh gives us this particular condition. He says, when he says that these who are what? Wise-hearted. You understand? These who are filth with wisdom. You know saying? These who are filled with wisdom, these are they who are chosen to do his work. Now, later on, what we'll have, we'll have like Freemasons. You know saying? We'll have Freemasons, which is, like I say, it's like there's a craftsman, there's those who are into the craft, and there's those who are into witchcraft. You see, you see the difference? There are agents, 
you know, an agent of a government or agent of one is under a strict order to fulfill what the one who sent them to do wants done. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. It's not do what thou wilt. The so-called Freemasons of today are of the do what thou wilt. But Bezaliel was doing the will of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and Tisselot's, uh picture right here is very interesting because it even um, portrays Bezaliel, a somewhat dark character in Judaism. You know what I'm saying? He's like the real so-called Hiram. You know what I'm saying? If you really want to put things into proper order from a he, uh, Hebraic perspective. But what we see right here is, is some of the, the, the tools right here of the craft. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at some of the tools of the craft as they come out of, as they come out of um, Egypt. We have the plumb bob right here. We have the chisel. We have the mallet. We have the crook. Right, the crook, the flail. On this particular side, we have the thing that look, look, looks like the A is actually the 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 plum bar, the plum ball, also called the plum bob. Here's the brick mode, the mode for the brick. Some of y'all who may have seen some of the vids from Ethiopia know that um. You know, they use this, utilize the same sort of a brick mold even today in making brick, in the brick making. You understand? We have the float or the floater. We have the, the square. You understand? The square. Um, some more symbols of the craft down here. Some of them which also take on certain religious significance because even the plum, the plum, um, the plumb line also takes on a very key significance. So we see that when Yahweh says um, that this one is filled with wisdom and this one chosen, Bezaliel, it's because he, like Musa, you know, said, understood how to make the ark, what the template of the ark, because he was initiated in the mysteries of the Egypts as um, Musa as Moshe was as well. And here is the root and the truth of true masonry. You know, of true masonry, of true building. One of the reasons why even Africa is the way it is because they have lost the art of the craft. And they have been initiated as, let's just go back to Second Peter once again, even we over here have lost, you know, the true principle. And, and this verse, I think, is the key, Second Peter 2.19, while they promise them liberty, while they promise such people freedom, you understand, free masonry, they themselves are the servants of corruption. So they become the servants of white supremacy, posing as so-called Freemasons, never recognizing what the true origins or purpose, this is the key thing, of or purpose of the craft really was. What's the purpose of the so-called Masonic craft, the carpenters and, and the other skilled persons? What do you think the purpose of the craft are? To build idols? You understand? To build false gods and idols? You understand? Or to make life better for people, to build homes and houses and water channels and irrigation systems and other things. So when folks talk about, well, Hila Selassie is a mason, and this one and that one is a mason. Let's get off this speculative, excuse my language, brothers and sisters, but shit, this speculative garbage, and let us get back to the root and the truth. And this particular Torah portion study actually points to it um, very, <laughs> very cleverly. This particular Torah portion, if we would really read it and look at the details, you understand know who was chosen, why he was chosen. You understand? And the key word, you understand, wise-hearted. Wise-hearted. Now, here, as we said, there's some of our notes right here, Mason versus so-called Freemason. Workmanship. The key words, looking up in the King James that you find workmanship. And we have the first workman or Mason or Smith or craftsman or builder or carpenter or hewer, you understand, or designer or artisan 
or, or jeweler even, is Bezaliel, you know, or Bezalel. And we find from Tisalot's painting, Bezalel, you know, he looks, he looks awfully, you understand, know, black. You understand, know, he looks awfully black right here. So there's something that they even know. And you can see here he has his apron on. You understand? He has his apron on. You know, he's in his shop with his tools, so forth and so on. And Yahweh points out exactly why he chose such a one. You understand? That one would know exactly what to build for Yahweh's worship. You understand? In the words, Moses would command him, and he wouldn't have to ask, well, do you want a little bit of this? How do you want it? Like that, so forth and so on. He must have been initiated, and the key word is filled with the Spirit of God, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Knowledge, we find this in, in Proverbs. If you look at Proverbs, knowledge, it talks about knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You know, and in some teachings, even today, 5% to other sort of teachings, it speaks about like knowledge is like the male, wisdom is like the female, and, and understanding or overstanding is like the children. You know, so, so those are those key, those key um, grades, you can say, or those key um, um, subject matters that one must be proficient in, have the knowledge. So when it says uh, arc, arc of the testimony, he has a knowledge of it. He has the wisdom now to take the elements, put it together, and have the understanding or the understanding to really, once completing it, to make these things elements that are workable and pleasing to to the one whom they have created these for, and it's the service of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when we speak about so-called masonry, it's very important that we don't get caught up on this foolish hype. You see, because part of that also is, is, is a trick. You understand? And we get turned off to any sort, of, any sort of craftsmanship. You understand? So we can't do these things for ourselves. We we'll have to be buying other people's products or depending on other people to build us a ditch or a well, a dam, build a house, another level to sew our clothing or, or be our jewelers or anything like that. So you can see the practical applications, and hopefully I pray that you can see the practical applications of this particular lesson to further distinguish the so-called Mason, the true Mason, from the pseudo free Mason, and and to really understand, these are as different as day and night, or as different as truth and and folly or or, or falsehood. So, um, right here, let's bring that up again. So we had a, this this point right here, workmanship, Bezalio. So we just touched on that Exodus 31, verses 1 to 11. These are some of the key words that we'll go through in the additional parts of this teaching, y'all willing, um, that you'll find in the scripture and the Bible. You can look these up. Workman or workmanship, mason, smith, craft, craftsman. And here we put a note to self, craftsman versus witchcraft. See, both of them are crafts. You understand? Like both of them are masons, Freemason and Mason. So, but the root is the mason, the root is the craft, and the spin, the, the, the satanistic, the devil's spin, be like God, you understand, is the Freemason, is the witchcraft. You have builder, Paul speaks about being a master builder, but then he says a wise. Notice how Paul uses that um, in the New Testament. He says, and like a wise master builder, we have carpenter. It said that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior, that he was a carpenter, or that Joseph was a carpenter. So in some sense, we can say that Yeshua himself was a member of the true craft. You understand? The true craft. See, see having these skills and being able to, you know, like being able to repair something, fix something, build something, these things are, are gifts of God. You understand? And it serves both God and the people very, very well. And I just, I, I just worry and fear that ones and ones again so caught up on this Freemason nonsense that they're losing sight of, of, of 
what's true from what's false. So we have the carpenter, the hewer, the hewer of wood, a hewer of stone, and there's various details to this. Now, this is something that we're just going to go over this, and hopefully we'll get back into this um, in more detail when we have the further part of this lecture prepared. But we just want to link the part about wisdom, you understand, and wise-hearted, which the scriptures point out in this portion right here. Let's go back to this um, right here where it says about wise-hearted. Uh, well, first of all, let's go to the top. It says, okay, Yahweh spake, the Lord spake to, to Moses. Josh spoke to Moses and See, I have called by name. This is the key. I've called by name Bezaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. Verse 3, it says, And I have filled him. Yah, Josh says he has filled him. Now he's given him a little bit, not poured a little bit in his glass or cup, but filled him with the spirit of wisdom. With the spirit of God, with the spirit of Elohim, in wisdom, so the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge. So it's the spirit of God in wisdom. We know that the spirit of God is a sevenfold spirit. The prophets teach us, and we can reference that in the prophets. But here, with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and it says, here's the key, in all manner of workmanship in all manner of workmanship. And when we now look at the job description of Bezaliel and his assistant, you understand, and those who would work under his supervision, we can clearly see that it's all manner of workmanship. So it wasn't one person who built the ark and another person who built the table of showbread and another person who built the menorah and another one who built the the altar of incense and another one who built the brazen lava and another one who built the brazen altar and another one who, who built the uh, designed the curtains or, or the kirubel, the cherubim, or another one who put up the posts or another one who built up the, you know, who designed the clothing. But it's all one, the breastplate and all the other elements. Elements, you understand? So this is clearly what it says in all manner of workmanship. So definitely we can say that Bezaliel or Bezalel had his work cut out for him, you understand, or was able to cut out his work himself. Verse 6, it says, In name, in Neho, Ka'ar Sugar, Kadan, Neged, Yemihon, Ye Ahia, Samikin, Lich, El Yabina Setahu, Yazeza Hu Hinahu Lu Yadar Yadargu Zen, Belabacho, Bel Belabacho Tibenoch in their hearts, wise ones Behonu to Lua Tibabina Noruhu, and I behold I have given with him a holy at the son of Ahisamak of the tribe of Don, and in the hearts of all. So speaking of others, the Tibabenyoch, which are the wise ones. So here it says the wise ones, obviously is pointing to the original idea of the craftsmen. Those who were, we can say, uh, using modern reference, who are the masons. But when we say masons in that sense, biblically speaking, we have to look at this uh, variation. You understand? And there's some other some other um, um, job description or titles that we can add to this, but the all men of workmanship, that means they were masons. The masons in the original sense was a builder, you understand? But then also it can mean a stone builder, one who builds with stone, but it can also refer to a carpenter can come under that same description. We have to get into the Hebraic and the Ethiopic, the Afro-Shemitic words to really get the detail you understand, of the particular operation that they were about. But the key word is, 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 is wise. Now, we say the qualification here of the true mason or craftsman is being wise-hearted. And we can follow this through in the scriptures, as is the case with the first named artisan. That's one of the best summary titles you understand, that we could find in our study and investigation of the Hebraic Mason that was named Bezalel and his assistant Aholiab in Exodus chapter 31, 1 to 11. Now note this, 
this was one of the notes that we wanted to, to connect right here, that the Israelite woman, we find the Israelite woman, they had donated their, what the Bible calls their looking glasses in the King James Version, their looking glasses or the mirrors. And the mirrors were for the brazen um, laver or what some would call the molten sea were called, they were called, these women, these Beta Israel women, these Hebrew women were called wise-hearted as well. Now, Gerald Macy was accurate when he stated on page uh, 274, volume 2 of his A Book of the Beginnings, namely that these mirrors or looking glasses were actually onks. They were actually onks with brass reflectors that had been brought with them out of Egypt, along with other elements and tools of the ancient craft. Now, Macy wrote this on page 274. The hand mirrors were probably the ankh, filled in with a brass reflector. You ever wondered about that? Like, we have mirrors today. What kind of mirrors they had in the past? So the hand mirrors were probably the ankh, filled in with a brass reflector. Ankh is an Egyptian name for a mirror. The Hebrew mirrors were contributed by the woman of the community to make the great um, the great uh, laver or the molten sea. The first mirrors were the heaven above that reflected light and the water below. The two sisters who impersonate the two heavens are called, according to the Mistir, the wisdom school of Egypt, they call the eyes of Re or the eyes of Ra. When the reflector merges into the 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 lava, right, the type is still continued. The Egyptian lava is a is a mirror. It's called mirror. The mirror is a maher. Maher and a goddess or a divine feminine principle whose symbol is an eye is named myrrh. So it's interesting how they would look, if you, if you look at the tabernacle right here, let's just go to the tabernacle right here. It's this particular point right here. This is where the, the, um, the brazen laver, you understand, was. And it's that brazen laver that the priests would have to wash you understand, to wash themselves before they could enter, before they could enter into the tabernacle and to give you a little, a little better or larger um, demonstration of, of the laver, which is called the kior. You understand, the kior will bring this up right here. We just want to show you where the kior was in relationship Right, we're in relationship to the tabernacle. So we have this was donated by the woman. You understand? Know Here's where the Kohanim or the priest washed himself before entry into the inner court. And this was donated by the woman, and we touched on the symbolic of this is spiritual cleansing, washing by the Dabar or Devar, the word, Dabar, remember Goma Az Dabar, the Dabar or Devar of scriptures. As we are often defiled in our daily walk, as we're often defiled in our daily walk. And that also connects with the act of the woman um, who anointed Yeshua's feet. You know what I'm saying? Who anointed, who anointed his feet before, his, um, before the crucifixion. So now, as we connect this right here to the brazen, to the brazen laver, we find that the Egyptian laver is called Mer, and the Mer is called Maher. And a goddess or a divine, feminine divine principle, like wisdom is often in the Hebraic and the Ethiopic referred to in a feminine sense, whose symbol is an eye, is named Mer, right? Mer. So Mer, water, and the eye are types of the mother, the types of the mother or what is known as the reproducer, the reproducer of the image, the one which reproduces the image. And here's the verse right here we have for you in Exodus chapter 38 and 8. It says, um, 
የመታጠቢያውን ሰንና መቀመጫውን በመገናኛው ዲንኳን ደጃፍ ከሚያ ገለግሉ ከሴቶች መስተዋት ከናስ አደረገ and he made the lever of brass and the foot of it of brass and of the looking glasses the looking glasses of the woman assembling which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation so the woman assembled notice what they assembled they assembled at the door roughly right here let us um let us bring this over so you can see this right here they assembled right here at the door you understand at the door this is where the woman assembled with these these uh looking glasses you understand or it was them who assembled here that donated their looking glasses or their mirrors which most likely were onks or in the onk like shape you understand to be melted down and smelted down for the brazen laver now the priest had a particular um relationship with this laver too as they would wash the whole idea was like washing in the water you understand washing washing um by the word or the water of the word of scripture so when they would look into the reflection when they would look into the eye that's how they you know you look into the water and because of the reflector of the water they would see their cleanliness or their defilement you understand and would either go forward or continue to wash and to cleanse themselves their hands and their feet mainly so we can see when Christ performed the ritual or demonstrated um the emare of of washing the disciples feet you understand this is before what you have to wash your hands and your feet before entering in to the inner court because remember right here is 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 the the brazen altar where the sacrifices where the animals were slain and and where the where they were burnt you understand right here and this corresponds as we mentioned before this corresponds in principle to the foot of the cross so even here in this picture right here this Ethiopian picture we superimpose the skull and bones down there so you really can overstand Golgotha you understand the place of the skull in relation to the symbology so one can overstand the divine symbology here so we have the woman you understand the woman who did what according to um Exodus chapter 38 and 8 it says that the woman were assembled the, the the woman assembling which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation so here we see a likeness of the marys of the marys you know saying at the foot of the cross and the foot of the cross corresponds in that sense to the door and the entryway of the tabernacle when the tabernacle is overstood as the body of Christ when it's overstood metaphysically on that particular on that particular um level right there now there's a couple of other words we have to 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 touch on but we want to assemble some of the um word pick you know the word picks and everything because it's in a picture you know um speaks like a thousand words but just to go over this right here mason we went through a couple of these words briefly mason in the bible the seven times so before people talk a lot of garbage they should look at uh, look this up in the scriptures mason is seven times here's some of the hebrew words that are related to the craft right um here's the verses right there then we have craft in the bible 29 times this is both in its good and proper use and we also see it in its which craft use so we have mason freemason craft which craft um then as we go forward right here the builder builder is another key word the builders as you probably know the most famous um quote in in the scriptures concerning the builders is psalm 118:22 the stone which the builders refuse is become the head 
stone of the corner, and this is a very much quoted. The builders are masons. We can see this from Second Kings 22 and 6 to the carpenters and builders and masons to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house of God. So who's going to repair the house of God? Not the Freemasons, but God's masons, those who have the spirit of wisdom, even the artifices. We have artifices, builders, gave they it to buy hewn stone and tim timber for couplings and to floor the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed. So we'll go through these hopefully um, verse by verse. And of course you have you have Hiram. You understand there was Hiram's builders, but then they never talk about the fact that David also, you understand, had assembled um, uh, masons. If we go back right here, we have David. The first verse with Mason and Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and set of trees and carpenters and masons, and they built David a house. So David worked with the masons to build his house, but he didn't work with no Freemasons. You understand the difference? Second Kings 12 and 12, and to masons and hewers of stone to buy timber and hewed stone to repair the breaches, the breaches of the house of the Lord of Yahweh, and for all that was laid out for the house to repair it, and so forth and so on. And you'll find more um, key examples there. Now, let's just go through this just to give you um, some example of what's in the Bible. And many folks have avoided that. It even shows the difference between the builders to hew, did hew, and the stone querers, the stone querers, those who were able to, to square, to square um, the stone squares, to square the stones. Then we have the word smith. Also linked to um, Bezaliel, let's just bring up Bezaliel here again, very important part of the scripture, Bezaliel, um, who was God's master mason to build, you know, the tabernacle, the furniture, so forth, and so on. So we have Smith, you know, saying the word Smith, you probably know that from the, from the Matrix movie, the Smith, Mr. Smith so forth and so on. But all these things actually get the rise and foundation and groundation in the scriptures. And there's all kind of smiths. There's silversmith, goldsmith, coppersmith, so forth and so on. And I guess people named Smith. Now, the key word, as we said before, was workman, workmanship. But the word here, um, ship, in the connection for ministry. It's employment, but it's not servile. Notice it's not servile employment. You understand? Employing, you always send a master to do a master work. You understand? But it's work, property, so forth and so on. So workmanship appears, or workman, 17 times in the King James um, in the King James Bible. We also touched on founder before we started this 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 vid right here. The word founder is five times in the Bible, and it's interesting because it's saraf almost sound like seraph, like seraphim, you understand, founder, um, basically one who's a goldsmith who melts or purges away or tries, or tries particular, tries particular metal. So there's a difference between Mason and Freemason, and we're going to go into more of this, John Willing, hopefully this has at least helped you to both understand this Torah portion, reading and feeding concerning um Bezaliel, you understand know who was who was uh, Bezaliel, what he was instructed to do, you understand, and how Jah had endowed Bezaliel of the tribe of Judah with the divine skill in every kind, in every kind of craft, in every kind of craft, according to Exodus thirty-one verses one to five. How Jah assigned to him a holy ab of the tribe of Dan and granted skill to all who are skillful. So he gave skill to all those who are skillful. That they might make the furnishings of the tabernacle, the priest vestments, the anointing oil, and the incense, according to Exodus 31, verses 6 to 11. And Jah had told Moses as well in this chapter, to admonish the Beit Israel of the Israelites. Nevertheless, 
Even though this work was an ongoing work and a work that had to be done, we find the admonishment, you understand, being made to the Beit Israel concerning Shabbat and concerning the Sabbath to admonish them to keep, to remember to keep the Sabbath, to keep the Senbet on the pain of death. Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 to 17. Then Jah gave Moses, at the end of this chapter, two stone tablets, two stone tablets which were inscribed, they, as, as the hieroglyphs are inscribed in stones, these two stone tablets were inscribed by the finger, the tat, or the, the digitalis, the digits of God, the finger of Jah, in Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. So we're going to continue with this um, as we as we go forward, just so that ones would better understand the true craft, in other words, the mason, the true Christman from the Antichrist and the Freemason, the true craftsman from those who are the witchcraftsmen of this end of the Gentile world times. And here, once again, is Bezaliel. He does look uh, he does look black, doesn't he?